I'm expecting my miracle. Ah, yes. Any day now. Yes, God. Any day now. I'm expecting my miracle.
my miracle. Come on, reach it forward, reach it forward. Any day now, any day now, hallelujah. I'm expecting my miracle. Somebody looking for deliverance. Any day now, oh, financial breakthrough. Any day now, oh. I shall have everything I need. He said he's a supplier. Any day now, oh. any day now, and by faith oh. is coming to me. Clap your hands if you believe that. Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, I want to do a song go way back, way back. You 
Don't know how we would make it. How we made it. Look at somebody say, I don't know how I made it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. If it wasn't for the grace of God. Glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to do a little request right here. Hallelujah. That nobody but Jesus made it possible. Hallelujah. Somebody say, it was Jesus that made it possible. Come on, say, Jesus made it possible. Come on, get with this thing, right? Why we are 
impossible. He made it possible. He made it possible. Jesus, he made it possible. He made it possible. Jesus, he made it possible. Jesus, he made it possible. He made it possible. He made it possible. Nobody but you, Lord. Yes, it is. Nobody but you, Lord. Yes. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Clap your hands and tell God, Hallelujah. Nobody but you, Jesus. Good morning. Hallelujah. I have one announcement, and it really is not an announcement; it's a reminder. As we close out the month of October, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. We remind you ladies, if you haven't already, please schedule your annual mammogram. It's a matter of life and death. Early detection, you have a better chance of surviving. So ladies, please, 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 if you have not already, schedule that annual mammogram. Our thought for the day, wake up every morning with the thought that something's wonderful is about to happen. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Hallelujah. And now a triumphant message from Minister Lula Jones. Glory to God. Hallelujah. This ain't no ordinary. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come on, y'all. God is able. This angel. ain't no ordinary. Praise the Lord. The God of service greater than the ordinary. So I'm going to give it all I have in the world. Yeah. Come on, everybody, say it. This ain't no ordinary word. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. This ain't no ordinary song. Oh. Woo. Hallelujah. Glory. 
Glory. Good morning. Good morning. This is a beautiful day. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we ought to rejoice and be glad in it. He woke you up this morning. You had walking in your feet. You got eyes, you can see. That's right. You got a tongue, you can speak. That's right. This is no ordinary day. <laughs> yes. God is able to do exceedingly, yes. abundantly above all that we can ask or even think. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Good morning to you. Hallelujah. Good morning to you. This is a wonderful day. Good morning to all those on Facebook. Hallelujah. We're glad to have you. And we're glad to have everyone in the audience. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come this morning with praise in my heart. I just want to give you all the praise. I want to magnify your name. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you. For you are my redeemer. You are my strength. You are everything that I need. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. You woke me this morning. The devil is busy, God is busier. So I don't care what he does, I'm gonna preach this word today. I wanna thank God for letting me be here. You don't know what I've gone through to be here. I was supposed to preach last third Sunday, but the devil was so busy that I went and had some dentures made. They made the dentures, and the next week, one of my tooth got an abscess. So then I had to go back and they had to pull that tooth. Then they had to send the dentures back. Tell me God, the devil ain't busy. But I, you know what I said? I don't care what you do. If I have to go without any teeth, I'm going. If I have to go up there and say whatever I have to say, and I don't care what it is. Yesterday, my knee tried to hurt. I know that I said the devil is busy, but you are lying. The truth ain't in you. I'm going to preach this word that you, God, has given me. And no matter what you say, I'm going to do it. Today I'm going to talk to you, and I'm going to ask you two questions. Who is Jesus? And do you know Jesus? Because those two things are very important. First, you ought to know who he is. You got to know who he is. You can't serve him if you don't know him. Do you know Jesus? I'm going to give you some information. You can write it down. Because, see, I'm a teacher. I'm a teacher. If you got a pencil, write this down. If you got a phone, you take it down. Because this is important. The name Jesus means Jehovah is righteous. The name Jesus means Jehovah is righteous. If you can't spell Jehovah, it's J-E-H-O-V-A-H. Jehovah is righteous. And Jehovah means God. So when you hear people saying, I'm a witness, for you, are, you believe in God. So you're a Jehovah witness too. You need to get it to understand it. The word Christ in Greek, mean Christos. Christ is not his last name. It's not his last name. It means the anointed one and his anointing. He is part of the Trinity. And Trinity means three. God is the creator. Jesus is the savior. 
The Holy Spirit is the agent in providential work of God. He leads and guides us into all truth. Let us make Jesus our master in our hearts. He is the master. He's everything. If you just trust him. In the beginning, God made the heaven and the earth. You find that in Genesis 1. If you got your Bible, you can turn to it. If you have a pencil, you can write it down. God made the heavens and the earth. John 1, 3 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. And it's talking about Jesus Christ. He was there from the beginning. When he said, let us make man, he was there. He and the Holy Spirit was there. It wasn't no angels. One person tried to tell me, oh, he was talking about the angels. No. God made the angels. He didn't need to leave them. He had his son and his Holy Spirit with him. So we have to realize that God loves us. John 3.16 said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, whosoever, it doesn't matter who you are, whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. God sent his son, sent not his son in to condemn the world, but the, that the world may, by him may be saved. He's our salvation. Jesus is our salvation. Jesus is our salvation. Back in the Old Testament, the prophets prophesied about him. They prophesied he was coming. They prophesied that Jesus was coming. Isaiah 53, he said, he will grow up before him as a tender plant and a root out of dry ground. He has no form, no commonness, and when we see him, there's no beauty that we should desire him. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was beat for our transgressions. He was beat because we were the sinners. He was not the sinner. He was wounded for our transgressions because we had violated the law. He was bruised for our iniquities because we, had, we were wicked and we didn't, we didn't care about justice. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his strife, we are healed. You are already healed. Not going to be healed. You are already healed. You are healed. Now, you have to believe you are healed, and you have to speak it. You have to say, by his strife, I'm already healed. That's what I had to tell my knee. You can do what you want to do, but I'm healed. God is able, you all. There's only one name under the sun that man may be saved, and that name is Jesus. When you need something called Jesus, 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 the matchless Lamb of God, Jesus. There are 66 books in the Bible, and they tell about Jesus coming. 39 of them talk about his coming. 27 talks about he is here. He's here. And then in Revelation, he, it tells you he's coming again. He's coming again, y'all. He's coming again. And he's coming for his church. He's coming for us. And we have to believe that he is who he say he is. Oh, I tell you, God is wonderful. If you want to know Jesus, you must read your Bible. You must pray. You must meditate. You must pray and you must worship him because he wants a relationship with you. He wants a relationship with you. Not about what you think about him, but he wants a relationship with you. After doing the prescribed things that I just mentioned, ask God for wisdom. But in all your getting, get what? Understanding. In all your getting, get understanding. Because wisdom is the principal thing, but you got to get understanding. When you read your Bible, don't just read it for the words, 
Ask God to give you revelation knowledge. Say, Lord, I need wisdom. I don't know what I'm talking about, but I need, I need, I need revelation knowledge. I want to understand it. See, a lot of people think I got a PhD and I can understand the word. But it takes revelation word, my knowledge. The Holy Spirit got to give it to you. He is going to teach you. He's going to train you. He's going to guide you into all truth. You need revelation knowledge. And then we go to the New Testament, and it tells us that God chose a virgin girl by the name of Mary to give birth to his only begotten son and Joseph to be his earthly father. Mary was impregnated by the Holy Spirit. Get this right now. She was impregnated by the Holy Spirit. No man impregnated her. The Holy Spirit impregnated her because he was doing what God told him to do. Joseph knew not Mary until after the birth of Jesus. Hey, I'm talking to you men now. Listen at that. Joseph knew not Mary until after the birth of Jesus. That means he didn't have any sexual relationship with her. I'm going to break it down to you so you'll know what I'm talking about. He did not have any relationship with his wife, even though he was married to her, until after the birth of Jesus. Even though Jesus was Christ, he went through trials and tribulation as a baby. At the beginning, Herod the king wanted to kill him. Herod didn't want anybody to be king of the Jews. And he heard that there was a baby born and that he was king of the Jews. He tried to tell the wise men to come back and tell him where he was located. But the wise, God spoke to the wise men and told them to go another way. So what happened was when Joseph, in a dream, heard from the angel, he said, take your baby and your wife to Egypt. Now, you know what that thought made me think about? When the children were in Egypt as slaves. But see, Jesus went down there and he was free. He was free. He, he went to Egypt and he stayed there until King Herod died. The angel told him to go back to Israel. But Joseph was afraid. So he went to a city in Galilee. And that city was Nazareth because the Bible in the Old Testament had prophesied that Jesus would be a Nazarene. And the Nazarite is, they didn't cut the hair. See, you, know, you, you heard about Samson, right? That's why his hair wasn't supposed to be cut, because he was a Nazarene. We have to understand that God has a plan. And whatever that plan is for your life, it's going to be carried out. He has a plan for everybody in here. Now you can sit here and say, well, he doesn't have a plan. Yes, he does. He has a plan for you. And whatever his plan, you're going to do what he tells you to do or else. Or else. Now, after Joseph came to Galilee and settled in Nazareth, he was a carpenter. The Bible tells us that Jesus was a, was a carpenter too. It never said anything about he went to school. He didn't need to go to school. He was almighty. He didn't need no education because he was the education. See, we have to understand who he was. And we don't hear anything about Jesus until he was 12 years old. And at 12 years, they went to Jerusalem. And they went up to worship. And when they got ready to leave, they couldn't find Jesus. Where was Jesus? He was in the temple talking to the leaders. And he was talking to them with wisdom. And they wanted to know, where, where did this child get this wisdom? And Mary and Joseph looked for two days. When they finally found him, Mary said, why did you do this? He said, it's time for me to be about my father's business. It's time for us to be about our father's business. It's time for us to be about our father's business. 
We busy trying to just walk around and, child, I don't know what I'm going to do. do. Do what the Lord say. Do what the Lord say. Do what he tell you to do. He grew up, and in due time, at 30 years of age, he was baptized by John the Baptist. And once he was baptized, when he came out of the water, the Holy Ghost, see, I want the Holy Ghost to descend on me like that. The Holy Ghost descended on him in the shape of a dove. And a voice came from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. See, God is pleased with Jesus. I want him to be pleased with me. I want him to be pleased with me. I don't do this because I want to please you. I do this because I want to please God. I want to please him. And then the spirit led him into the wilderness for 40 days. And there the devil tipped to him. That's why I tell you the devil's going to tempt you. He's going to do everything he can to keep you from being what God called you to be. This is why we have to pray. We have to pray because Jesus said, Satan comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Who is Jesus? Do you know Jesus? Do you know him? Do you really truly know Jesus? Let me give you some characteristics of Jesus. I'm just going to give you a few things, because I could go on and on and on, but I'm going to give you a few things. Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Jesus is the lily of the valley. That's the most beautiful flower in the valley. Jesus is the rose of Sharon. He's excellent in God's sight. He is the bomb in Gilead. Well, what does mom do? Bomb heals. So he's the healer. He's the healer. He is Jehovah Shalom. He's our peace. When your time, trouble get on your heart and you can't think, this, you can't just, sometimes I can't, I can't even think. Sometimes things are happening and I just can't think. But he's my peace. He's my peace. Jesus saved, and it's the only name under the sun that you may be saved by. Jesus is the stone that the builders rejected, and now he's the head of the cornerstone. He's a stone, he's, he's a rock in the weary land. When, you, when things are going bad for you, just get, get on that rock and just rock with him. Jesus is the rock. Jesus is our foundation. He's the foundation that gives us stability in our hearts and our lives now and in the future. All of us should have a relationship with God, Jesus. I can't tell you, well, I can't tell whether you got one, but I'm saying you should have one. You should have a relationship with Jesus. He, to know him is to love him. He wouldn't want, who wouldn't want to know Jesus? Who, who, you know that song, do you love Jesus? I love Jesus. What's wrong with you? You know, I know y'all think I don't listen to these songs, but I do. do. Do you love Jesus? I love Jesus. What's wrong with you? You gotta love Jesus. You gotta love him. You gotta love him every day. Because if you love him, then you'll love people. But you can't love people if you don't have love in your heart. God say, I am love. God said, I am love. John 5, 20 said, if a man say, I love God and hate his brother, he's a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God who he has not seen? We haven't seen God, we haven't seen Jesus, but we gotta have love in our heart for him. We gotta love him no matter what. You have to love people when they mistreat you. You have to love people when they don't like you. You have to love people when they talk about you. Because you know what? They did all this to Jesus. They not only did, this, did that, they crucified Jesus. They crucified him. They crucified him and hung him on an old rugged cross for our sin. 
He hadn't sinned, but it's for our sin. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All of us. Not a person sitting in here. All of us have sinned. I don't know what you've read about Jesus or what you've heard. But I tell you this, don't treat him like you treat the television star. You like him one day, you hate him tomorrow. He wants to know you in your transgressions, in your iniquity, in your sin. He wants to be your priest because he prays for you. He prays for you. He's sitting at the right hand of the Father, interceding for you. He wants to be your prophet. Because sometimes he has to tell you what's coming. Prophets are full seals. They foretell what's going to happen. Sometimes he wants to tell you that. And if you listen, you'll hear. Not with your ears, but with your spirit. He wants to be your provider. He wants to provide you for whatever you need. Whatever you need, Jesus has. It. The earth is the Lord, the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. It all belongs to him. In the back, he says, even the silver and the gold belong to me. We don't own anything. It all belongs to him. The silver and the gold, even the cattle on a thousand hills belong to the Lord. We got to recognize that we are just here to be managers over what he's letting us use right now. Because see, when you die, there's not going to be a U-Haul following you to no grave. You have to realize you're not taking anything with you. So we have to understand that he wants to be our everything. Will you get to know him? Will you get to know him? Will you get to know Jesus? In case you don't know him, this is what you must do. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, For if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved, not might, but thou shalt be saved. For the, with the hard man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. If you don't know the Lord, this is a perfect time to get to know him. This is a perfect time to tell him to come into your heart. Forgive me for my sins, for I have sinned and come short of your glory, Lord. I need your sin. I need you to forgive me. I need your forgiveness. You know, sometimes I think about how he's brought me. And he done brought me from a mighty long way. Little black girl from Kings. Had no aspirations whatsoever. Went to school at four years old. Graduated from high school at 17. Went to Alcorn State at 17. Graduated from Alcorn. Just celebrated my 50th year of getting a degree at Alcorn State. I didn't want to be no director of the Department of Human Service. Do you all know? I didn't want to do that. But God, God wanted me to do that. When it first, when, they, when, when everybody was applying for the job, I didn't apply. One day, the regional director came down and she said, Lula, did you apply for that job? I said, no. She said, why not? I don't want it. She said, I'm going to give you this application because everybody that calls up here, they're asking for you. You might as well get paid for it. She gave me the application. I sent it in. They sent it back to me and said, the position is closed. Show you how God works. <laughs> Show you how God works. She came back downstairs another day. She said, Lou, did you ever send that? I said, I did. They sent it back. She said, where is it? I said, in the drawer. She said, huh, give it to me. She took it back to the state office, and they opened the position back up just for me. Just for me. Tell me what God won't do. 
Tell me what God wants. Whatever he plans in your life, he will do it. I said, I said, oh, I don't want to be a director. Well, the day that we were interviewed by the commissioner, one person that was supposed to be interviewed had a flat tie. The other one got called out on a social work case. Who you think was first? I was first. Went into the office, was talking with the commissioner, and he started asking me about my childhood and everything. And I enjoyed talking to him. We got to be friends. He told me about his wife and his children. We were just talking. And the last thing he asked me, he said, Lula, if you don't get to the position, what you gonna, what you gonna do? I said, you can't miss nothing you never had. He said, huh? I said, I don't have it, I'm gonna miss it. He told me, he said, okay. He said, well, I'll talk to you later. He left. My mail was going to my daddy's house. I went to the, down to my daddy's house and there was a letter from Bill Elaine, the governor. I said, what in the world the governor write me for? I opened the letter up and it says, you have been promoted to the director of Warren County Department of Human Services. I was so shocked. I was so shocked. I folded the letter up and put it back on the table. Vanessa came in. The letter was laying there. She said, who got a letter from the governor? I said, I did. She said, can I read it? I said, yeah. She read it, and she just started jumping up hollering, Daddy, Daddy, made him new director of the Department of Human Services. I ain't never changed the expression. So the Monday I was supposed to go to work, I didn't go to work, y'all. I stayed at home. Then the people at the office started calling me. Why you didn't come to work? One of the ladies said, I know you got that job. I say, yeah. She said, well, why don't you come on to work? I said, not today, I'm gonna take a break. The newspaper called me and they say, Ms. Jones, the commissioner wants us to interview you for a write-up in the paper. They, they said, we'll come to the office. I said, no, I'm not at the office. They said, well, I tell you what. I said, I tell you what, I'll come to your office. So I went to their office and I did the interview. It was the hardest thing for me to realize that I was the new director. But God put me there. I didn't want the job, even though I'd held every job in the office, except for a clerk. I'd been an eligibility worker, a child support worker, a social worker, and a supervisor. And the highest office was director. I did not want it, but I'm gonna tell you something. What God has for you, it is for you. And I don't care how you try to go around it. He's gonna come right back to you. He has a plan for everybody in here and also on Facebook. If you'll just listen, if you'll just obey, if you will obey the will of God, he'll take you places you never thought you would go. He'll take you places you never thought you would go. Who thought I would've went gone to San Juan, Puerto Rico? Not me. Who thought I would've gone to Alaska? I've been all over this country. But I tell you, he took me. He took me, not me. And it's not about me. It's all about him. I give him the glory. I thank him because he's been better to me than I've been to myself. He's done things for me I never thought I could do. And I want you to start reading, start praying, start trusting, and let him take you where he wants to take you. He has a destiny for you. And I know you think, okay, why is she telling me? I'm telling you this because the Holy Spirit told me to tell you this. When I was writing out my sermon, I said, well, Lord, I don't know what, how this is gonna go. He said, I want you to tell your testimony. And I said, tell my testimony. I said, but he wakes me up like four o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning, talking to me, telling me what to do, what to say, when to say it. 
So I, I'm going to leave you with this because the pastor wants us to remember this. Well, you better write, you need to write it down. Knowledge without practice is useless. Knowledge without practice is useless. Practice without knowledge is dangerous. If you don't have any knowledge and you're trying to tell somebody, you can get them in a world of trouble. Practice without knowledge is dangerous. Read your Bible, pray, trust the Lord, and do what he, the word tells you to do. And God will see you through. He'll see you through all kinds of things. I had trials and tribulations, but he saw me through. I've been through some things that nobody would believe, but he saw me through. He'll see you through. Jesus is my all in all. He, I want him to become your all in all. I want him to love on you like he's loved on me. And he will love on you. Trust him. Lean not to your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. If there's anyone here who is not saved, this is your opportunity to become saved. All you have to do is believe that God raised Jesus from the dead and confess that he is Lord. That's all you have to do. You don't have to do what I had to do when I was a child, get on the morning bench. Our parents didn't know any better. So they told us to get on the morning bench. My daddy even told me, if you get up there and you don't have nothing, I'm going to make you shame. Well, one day in August, out of St. Mark, I got up anyway. When the preacher said, do you know the Lord? Anybody here love the Lord? Anybody want to know him? I got up. I was waiting for my dad to make me shame, but he didn't. Because the Holy Spirit told him to sit down because I knew who Jesus was. And I stood up there and I confessed. I got baptized in chicken sauce. And at the time, all that green stuff was on the water. I got baptized in a, river, in a lake with all this green stuff. I remember that. It's been 67 years since I confessed Christ. You got to confess them. So if it's anybody here, anybody here who is not saved, this is your perfect opportunity. And if there's anyone here who needs prayer, you may come right now. You may come right now. Catch hands. Everybody catch hands. 
Catch hands. We can we can hold each other's hand on too. Hold hands. All right. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you this morning. We come praying for our sisters and brothers. We don't know what their needs are, but you know what their needs are. I ask that you touch them from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet, that the anointing of the Holy Ghost will come on them, that they will be blessed and highly favored. I pray, Lord, that each one of them will get to know you, will get to know you, that we will have a relationship with you, that they will pray, that they will tell God, tell you all about their problems so that you can take it to the Father. I know that you hear me when I pray. And since you hear me when I pray, I'm asking you to touch everybody that's up here. Everybody. Touch them. Touch Lord God. Move, Lord God. Have your way, Lord God. Do what you want to do, Lord. As often as you want to do it, do it, Lord. Do it. Do it, Lord. Do what you want to do. I know you are evil. I don't doubt what you say. Your word is true. Do what you want to do, Lord. As often as you want to do it. Do it. Do it, Lord. Move on them. Move on them. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Heal, Lord. Heal, yes. Lord. Heal. 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 Manifest your healing right now in the master's name of Jesus. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. And every tongue that rises shall be condemned. Lord, touch. Touch. Touch right now. Touch. Touch. Have your way. Do what you want to do. Show them their destiny. Show them where you want them to go. Show them how to get to where you want them to go. Have your way. Have your way. In Jesus' master's name I pray. Amen and amen. amen. You may be seated. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Glory. Amen. Glory. Sister Vampire, stay right there. The rest of y'all can have a seat. Yeah, you stay right there. You, you stay right there. I want to say this to you because I heard the Spirit talk to me, and, and I need for you to hear me. Uh, you're an amazing grandmother, but yet mother, because you took the mold of mother by adopting these kids. And I know because I was there. And so many times young people don't understand what you give up to show them how much you love them. And so many times it seems in life like your efforts are all in vain. And it seems like they don't appreciate the things that you do for them. And there are moments when you realize and you ask yourself, have you made a mistake? I know where you are. I, I hear the Spirit talking to me, and he's speaking to you. But I want to encourage you this morning. And I want you to hear me with your heart and not with your head and with your ears, but with your heart. That you, what you're doing, God is going to bless you times over times. Yes, yes, He is. Yes, He is. Hallelujah. To have the heart that you have, to give like you give, to go like you go, and to be what you are. Today in this society, you don't find that too often. And I know sometimes you go to bed wondering why. I know sometimes you sleep through the night wrestling, wondering if you're making a difference and if you are living righteous and doing what you're supposed to do 
for your children who, you, who are your grandchildren, but yet they're your children. But I want you to understand something. God hadn't forgotten about you. Amen. Amen. I want you to hear my heart as your pastor. Your labor is not in vain. Even if they don't understand and appreciate everything you do for them. It's not about what they see, it's what God sees. Even if they don't come back and say, Grandmama, Mama, we appreciate all that you do. God appreciates you. You could have put them in the system. You could have kicked them out in the street. You could have left them all by themselves. But your heart was filled with the love that Mr. Lula's talked about a few minutes ago that was in you, that's in you, that God gave you, that you didn't want your grandchildren to be in any place but in the right place where they need to be, and that was with you. But to go the extra mile to adopt them as your children, that's volumes that words can't express. And I want you to know through all of your pain, through all of your hurt, through all of the non-appreciation that seems like you're not getting from them, I want you to know, number one, God loves you and God appreciates you. Number two, I'm grateful for you being who you are to your children. Yeah, you have your own flesh with your daughter, but they're your children too. And I want you to know this. That even when life seemed to not be going the way that you wanted to go, it's all working for your good. Amen. Amen. Let me say it again. It's working for your good because the word of God said it's working for your good. Yes, it is. Keep your head up. Don't turn to the left. Don't turn to the right. Don't even allow when they don't appreciate you the cause you want to put them somewhere they don't need to be. Stay with them. And watch this. Uh, Jesus spoke a parable. And he talked about there were a hundred, how he had blessed. And they all went in to celebrate. But one came back and said, Amen. I appreciate what you did for Amen. us. If not but just one of them come back and say, I appreciate you, that's the volume of what your heart needs to know, that your labor is not in vain. Amen. If nothing but one of them say, Mama, Grandmama, what do you want me to do? Hear the heart of that child. And know today that God has you covered in every way. Your knees are going to be met. Your heart is going to be filled with joy. And God is going to bless you in more ways than you could ever imagine. I promise you that. I promise you that. He sees you. He knows what you're going through. But at the end of the day, there's a blessing in store for you. If you would just stay the course, stay the course. don't give up, don't, don't give up. in, don't turn around, don't even let their attitudes, even their conversation, even their floppy lips that they give you at times cause you to turn around and do what God is telling you to do in going forward. And even in your tears, God is going to give you joy that's unspeakable. Yes, he will. You hear me? You trust what I'm telling you. Father, I pray now for this, your daughter, your child, our sister. God, you know where her heart is. You know where her spirit is, her mind. You see the things that she deals with on a daily basis. God, even when she have to leave her children and go to the convalescent home, oh God, and take care of families and people that she don't even know. And then to come back home to the ones that she do know and give her all. 
I pray that you give us strength. I pray that you refuel her, revive her, refresh her, rekindle her. Give her everything she need in this season, oh God. That she will know without a shadow of doubt that you have her at your best interest. And even when she wants to give up, God, give angels charge over yeah. that would encourage her yeah. to continue to fight the fight of faith, to hang in there, to keep on keeping on, yeah. knowing there's a brighter day on the horizon. Yeah. And God, you have something in store for her yeah. that eyes have yet to see, ears have yet to hear, and nor has it entered into the heart of man the things you've already prepared for her, oh God. Yeah. We speak it up on our life. We decree that it's done. We encourage her in faith. And we pray that you will just love in her, love on her, and love through her, oh God, that her life will be a light to even her children, teaching them how they ought to be, showing them how to walk, being a light to them even when they don't even understand. Bless her now. Keep her, oh God and help her in every way. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to come over here, daughter. And I know you love your mama because you tell me this all the time. I know you love your mama. Now, I want you to do something for her. I want you to give her the biggest hug you ever gave her. Right here in public. No, that ain't no big hug. That, see, that, that, that's my hug. I want you to hug her so tight. I want you to let her know how much you really appreciate her. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell her how much you love her. Amen. Now I want y'all to come up here and do the same thing. All the children that she adopted, all of you come up here. Every last one of you. And I want y'all to love on her. I don't want no faking. I don't want no shaking. I want you to love on her. For what she do for all five of y'all every day of her life. She go without so you all can have. Now let me say to you all, and y'all need to hear me. Step around where y'all can see me. Come around here. Come around here where y'all can see my face. Come on up here. You too. Come on up here. Come on, baby. See, disobedience causes problems. Walk her up here, sister. Keeping me alive 